The Rams are fully into evaluation mode. Guys are getting cut. What does it mean for this weekend? It's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen every single day, free and available wherever you get your podcast, part of the Locked on, or Locked on Podcast Network, not part of the Locked on Lotcast Network, but you know what I'm talking about. Thanks for making us part of what you do. Not only do I host the Locked on Rams pod, but of course I host the Rams pre-half and post-game show on their flagship station, ESPN 710. We get that going two hours before each and every game, which means this week, uh, one 25 kickoff against the Chiefs. Kirk Morrison and I'll get you going at 11:30, and then right after the game, we got all things Rams. So if you want to weigh in uh, there, that is a good way to do it as well. Here's what's coming up on today's pod: Melvin Gordon. Should the Rams kick the tires on yet another running back? That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Plus, I'm going to talk about Bryce Perkins and getting some QB one reps in practice this week. What obviously that might mean for the Rams this weekend. But let's start right here. But not before I tell you that today's episode of Locked On Rams is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NFL. So. Yesterday, um, on Tuesday, the Rams made an announcement that they were cutting both running back Daryl Henderson and linebacker Justin Hollins. Um, th- this was surprising in the sense that Henderson was a part of it. It was surprising in the sense that it kind of came out of nowhere. But when you really stop and think about it, this is about when these sorts of things start to happen. And here, here's what I mean by that. Rams are having a bad season. The Rams are three and seven. They're not going to make the playoffs. They're very likely to be not only under 500, but significantly under 500. They're very likely um, to not only be under 500, but to potentially be in the you know, three, four, five worst records in the league. Knowing what we, you know, if you've listened to this podcast and you subscribe to Locked on Rams and the Locked on Rams YouTube page, which you should subscribe to both of those, um, you know what we've been talking about, which is very simply, this is um, a team that might finish with four or five wins. There, there is a possibility. I don't think it's likely, but there's a possibility that they may have won their last game of the season. They got Denver. They got the Vegas Raiders. So obviously a couple of other teams that are really struggling. Um, but five seems the high end and three or four is certainly a possibility. So you're going to start to send messages. You're going to start to evaluate. And I think that's what this was for the Rams with regards to Henderson uh, and the rest. This was a... Listen, you need to play better. You need to be available. We are not messing around. We can live without you. We're losing with you. I'm going to try to win without you. And I think that's what this was. I think there's also a little, make good may be the wrong phrase here, but I think that there's a little bit of something going on with Henderson as far as giving him uh, another opportunity that he has been the Rams air quote best running back this season as far as yardage gains as far as carries and things like that but his workload has been getting less and less he tweeted the uh, you know the hallelujah emoji when they released him maybe he catches on with somewhere else maybe he starts to perform better in a different environment time will tell um I think this was perhaps more than anything a guy that was going to be up at the end of the year anyway. They weren't planning on re-signing him, so let's get him out and let's take a look at what we have right now, which namely is Cam Akers and Kyron Williams, Um, both of those guys under contract for next season and beyond. So this is an opportunity not only to evaluate those guys without another player being in the way and without another player not getting opportunities, and maybe the Rams want to make sure it does get – you know. There's been no rumbles about anything other than Daryl Henderson being a good teammate, being a good Ram. So maybe they're thinking, listen, we don't have plans for you. Why don't you go get started on whatever it is you're going to go do next? And they released him, and perhaps he was good with that. That's not a bad message to send to the rest of the league, by the way. Is If you do come here, and for whatever reason, it may not work out the way that everybody hopes, we're not going to be the, the team that buries you. We'll allow you to go somewhere else if, in fact, it doesn't really cost us a whole lot. That, I think, is a good message to have out in the league. But more than anything, I think that the uh, the other cut, Justin Hollins, and what we're talking about here is 
you need to play better. You, you, everybody needs to realize that we're doing this for money. We're doing this for wins. And if you don't perform, we're going to get rid of you. He played in all 10 games so far this season. He started five of those 10 games and he put exactly one sack on the board. This was somebody that has Aaron Donald playing opposite them a lot of the time. This is somebody that Leonard Floyd is a teammate that he's going to get a lot of attention as well. And he still couldn't make an impact on this team. I think that's where the Rams are is basically saying, listen, we're not just carrying guys anymore. If I don't need, if I have no plans for you moving forward, we're going to start moving you out right now. And I think this is also the very obvious wake up call to the rest of the guys inside the organization that, listen, you can either do this the way that we want you to do it. We're evaluating you or we're going to move to the next guy because we're three and seven. We're going to finish five and 12. Maybe we're going to finish three and six, 15 for what would it be three and 14. Maybe. So we're going to start taking a look. And I think all of that is what this is. It's good news for Kyron Williams. In a weird way, this is good news for uh, Cam Akers as well. Let's talk a little bit about Bryce Perkins when we come back. Let's talk a little bit more about those running backs and some just some weirdness that's been going on inside the Rams with that particular position over the last couple of years. That's all coming up next on Locked on Rams. This episode of Locked on Rams is brought to you by BetterHelp Therapy Online. So if you've gotten into a pickle and you've gotten to a point where you're struggling to figure out how to get out of a kind of a, a, a rut, right, and you keep thinking about the same thing and you can't quite figure out how to solve that problem, therapy is probably a very good option for you. This, this is an opportunity for you to figure out how to problem solve, not just the current problem that you might be on, but how to do this moving forward. And BetterHelp is a great way to do this. It's a very complex thing going on between your ears, and you need somebody to kind of help you navigate through it every once in a while. And BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, it's secure, it's accessible anywhere, and it's 100% online. I've seen it for myself, people that have gone through therapy, and they've come out, and they feel better about themselves, and they feel better about what's coming up in their lives next. All the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, it's more accessible, and it's more affordable. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It really couldn't be any simpler. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Thanks for making Locked on Rams your first listen today. Now for your second listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today pod. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, the running backs before we get to Bryce Perkins. I don't know if this is a coincidence, or I don't know if this is the nature of the NFL, or I don't know if this is a particular thing in the Sean McVay universe that's just going to happen um, periodically. And here's what I'm talking about. Let's go back to when Sean McVay was here, and Todd Gurley nearly won the MVP, was a very, very good candidate to win MVP in McVay's first year, and they were terrific. And Sean McVay made Gurley one of the best players in the league. And Todd Gurley was one of the best players in the league. Fast forward to the next year, he gets a little bit of a bump and a bruise and an injury and doesn't play quite as much. And things start to change pretty dramatically. And then by that third year, Todd Gurley's out of favor. And Todd Gurley's down the road. And the Rams have paid him. And they said, you know what? This ain't working out anymore. Todd Gurley, thanks for the memories. Bye-bye. They draft Cam Akers. Cam Akers comes in and makes a pretty big splash and looks pretty good. Looks like he's part of the team. Gets hurt the following year. Misses the most of it. This was last year. Comes back at the end. Doesn't play very well. And then the beginning of this season, he's totally out of favor, despite projected to being the starter. And the next thing you know, he's being told to go home for a number of weeks. Don't even come around the team. Only they somehow salvage it, and he comes back, and now he's a part of the team again, but it feels like it's very tenuous at best. Now, all of a sudden, throw in what happened to Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson was, a, by the Rams' standards, a very highly drafted player, and it didn't really work out, and they got to the point where they said, yep, we don't need this anymore. I think that's part of the position of running back in the league at this point, where a lot of teams feel they can find a running back um, later in the draft or undrafted or as a free agent or whatever it may be. I think that's part of it. And I think it particularly uh, is reflective of how Sean McVay uh, potentially views that position as well. Um, that they go through these guys and, and good ones occasionally too, as quickly as they do. 
um, I think is is pretty interesting. So something something to keep your eye on moving forward. If I'm Kyron Williams, I I'm certainly keeping a, a look on that and any future Ram draft picks that get brought in at that position. Uh, the history does not mean that you're going to be here for a super long time. You might get a lot of carries. You might play pretty well, but they might move on from you a little bit quicker than anybody thought. Um, as for Bryce Perkins, the reports are that he's going to get a lot of reps at QB one this week, and why not? Right? Um, let's see it. I, I, I don't have huge expectations for what's coming up um, against Kansas City this weekend as far as the team goes or even individually uh, as far as Bryce Perkins goes. But I do have expectations about how he might look a month from now. Think about it. It's it's the late November. If we get to around Christmas and Bryce Perkins has played three or four games and he looks like he's improved from half against Kansas City to a game against um, – uh, excuse me, half against New Orleans to a game against Kansas City to whatever's coming up next week against Seattle. And you get the Raiders and you get the Broncos and right on down the line and he's getting better. You might have something here. And and, and by, by something, I mean, you might have a guy that can elevate to the number two position. You may have a guy that you can use as an asset to go acquire other positions that maybe are of greater need. You could you do the same thing with John Wolford. But you're going to get a really good look. The Rams have used this roster spot this year for a, Q- a QB3, which a lot of teams choose not to do. Most teams choose not to do. The Rams have carried that third quarterback because I believe that they believe that Bryce Perkins has value. Well, we're about to find out. There's no reason to play Matthew Stafford. I've talked about it ad nauseum. And while I don't have any insight into this specifically, having been around this team for seven years, having seen the way that they operate and and kind of reading between the lines of what Sean McVay has said about how the person is more important than the player. We're going to be very cautious with Matthew moving forward, things like that. I would be shocked if he plays another staff for the Rams this season. I would be genuinely shocked and, and quite frankly, bummed out because I do not think that he is a guy that needs to take any more snaps this season. Quite frankly, I think you know what you got with John Wolford. I think it's pretty limited because of his size and because of just what he brings to the table. I don't know what the answer is for Bryce Perkins. I'd like to see it. I'd like to figure out if he can be, I don't know if it's a change of pace because you're not going to take Matthew Stafford off the field in in a normal situation, but it could be somebody that gives you a little bit of an idea what this offense may look like post Matthew Stafford. Somebody that plays quarterback a little more um, or maybe a little less traditionally than Stafford and a little bit more in the modern vein. Like, I I mean, the Rams certainly aren't going to have an opportunity to draft uh, Caleb Williams. I wouldn't think. But you get a guy that's big and strong like that, that can run, that can move his feet, and Perkins is more in that mold. Um, let's see what it looks like. So when you have to make a decision about who your next quarterback is going to be, how Sean McVay's offense operates with a more mobile and, and less traditional quarterback, maybe you got a little bit of uh, data on that. Plus, I think he's a pretty cool customer. I'm excited to see him. I don't expect them to win a lot of games the rest of the way, but I am excited to see how Bryce Perkins plays. All right, coming up next, we're going to talk about why the Rams should not kick the tires on Melvin Gordon. I think that's a very, very bad idea, and we will get into it coming up on Locked on Rams. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. You add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring, and simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and ultimately hire. You know how important those hires are when you are running that small business. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality candidates versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, so Melvin Gordon is on the street and available for whoever wants him. He's cleared waivers. The Rams have theoretically at least a vacancy at running back, and perhaps uh, Melvin Gordon is a guy that's been connected to the Rams in the past as somebody maybe that they would have some interest in. Um, It wasn't that long ago that he was a very effective NFL player, that he was with the Chargers here in town. They got into a contract dispute, which whatever, that happens all the time in the NFL. It didn't work out. He goes to uh, to Denver, and he's not very good. And not only is he not very good, he's got the fumble bug, right? He he keeps putting the ball on the ground. Um, 
if that's unfixable, I don't know why anybody would want him. Now, there is talent there. There is something that is intriguing there, but the Rams do not need to do it right now. If, if they want to use, I, I think the net, the rest of this season needs to be used to evaluate the people that are in your building. You need to evaluate as best as you can who's on that offensive line, who you're going to want to bring back to add some depth. Like, you know, next year you're going to have Logan Bruss back. You're going to have, theoretically, you're going to have your starting five. That Nopum will be back. That Edwards and Allen and all the guys, Shelton and then Rob Havenstein, who they recently signed. You're going to have that line that'll allow you to be more functional just at the basic level. But who do you want to keep as your backups? Does a guy like Tynaseki get to stick around? Unlikely. Does somebody like Bobby Evans get to stick around? Very unlikely. But go on down the line, and all of these guys, Matt Skura and, and Ode um, Obushi, all, all of these guys that may or may not be a part of it, let's see what they have. Let's see what they can do for Kyron Williams. Let's see what they can do for Cam Akers. Let's see what they can do for, for Bryce Perkins. And I think that's why you want to see what all of these players are. Offense, defense, special teams across the board. Let's see what you have. Let's not necessarily bring in players where I think Sean McVay, if you asked him what he thinks of Melvin Gordon, he's got a pretty good idea. I don't, I don't know if it's good, bad, or indifferent. I know that he knows what that is. I don't know if he knows what it is that he's got in his locker room right now. And I think that's what they need to focus on. I think they need to focus on what is on your roster, who's part of your future, who isn't. And then you can start looking around the rest of the league and maybe filling some holes along the way. A little bit shorter version of Locked on Rams today. Enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday. Of course, we will have our Locked on Rams crossover edition with Locked on Chiefs. That will be coming up tomorrow. And then we are off into the games. Enjoy them very, very much. Thanks for making us your first listen every single day. Now for your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today pod. Biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Until next time, whose house? It's Locked on Rams house. Happy Thanksgiving.